I appreciate you joining our availability, man, but I think you might be on the wrong, you might have entered the wrong media availability <laughs> session. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, actually, I don't think that he did. Um, I'd like to announce to the media that uh, <laughs> today I would like to formally announce Tyler Reddick is part of a future member of the 2311 and Toyota racing family starting in 2024. So, Hi, buddy. Hey. What's up? <laughs> What's up? Thanks. Surprise? Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> scoot, scoot in a little more there, guys, so we can get you together. There you go. Come together more. closer. All right. <laughs> All right. We're already rubbing fenders. I've had enough of that. So that happened. Yesterday, if you haven't seen, Tyler Reddick and Denny Hamlin announced that Reddick would be joining the 2311 race team in 2024. Now, this has had a bit of fallout overall when it comes to RCR. The fan base has had tons of different opinions, issues, whatever you might have with it. And today, I think it would be appropriate to look at all aspects of this move. There's a lot of people who are very positive or very negative of it, but I think that there's a lot of nuance here. So what we're going to do is look at the good, the bad, and the ugly of Tyler Reddick to 2311. Starting off with the good. The good for Tyler Reddick is that he's going to be in the Toyota racing family. As a Toyota driver, in theory, he's going to have a better car than he would at RCR, and there's going to be more upside. Toyotas have been extremely fast in the last couple years, honestly, the last decade or so. And on top of all of that, Toyota is a manufacturer that doesn't really waste time on slower teams. They generally try and have their cars all be the best possible cars they can have. And if this all works out for Reddick, he might have an elite level car with his elite level talent. Another good one is stability with sponsorship. This isn't a dig at RCR, but 2311 has been better at selling their drivers when it comes to sponsorship overall, and I think that this will only continue with Tyler Reddick. This stability with sponsorship should help him not have to worry about anything whatsoever when it comes to off-the-track issues. It should probably, in theory, also help him with his star power, as... A lot of extra sponsors and big name sponsors like 2311 likes to get will probably have Tyler Reddick in either commercials or in some kind of marketing for it. So this stability, I think overall, will really help Reddick and may even help his stock in the sport overall. Plus the on-track product should be better for him with a lot of added funding that he would never get with Richard Childress Racing. Another great part of this is it pops off silly season. So it's going to be a lot more fun for probably anyone who's talking about or paying attention to the sport right now through the end of the season. It really gets the intrigue up for 2023 and 24. As we know, there's going to be a lot of different moves made. There's a big question now of who's going to be taking over the number eight car. Will it be Noah Gregson? Will it be Kyle Busch maybe? Will it be somebody we're not even thinking of? Or will... Tyler Reddick maybe leave this contract early and 2023 has everything whatsoever in play. There's a lot of interesting dominoes that now could fall or are being put in motion because of this move being announced. And then another good thing, the last good thing I think we should talk about here is the announcement. Wow. What a way to drop a tactical nuke on the entire NASCAR silly season climate than to just do that out of the blue, keeping it a secret for God knows how long. So I got to give props to Denny Hamlin. While his team might not be performing at the greatest level right now, it is incredible to see just how well they are at marketing. Now, like I said, there's plenty of good, but let's look at some of the bad. Currently, the first bad thing is the current state of 2311 racing. 2311 has taken steps since its first season. It's not necessarily bad with its performance, but at the moment, this team is a mid-pack team. I would even say that RCR with Reddick has outperformed 2311, and Reddick might be going into the same exact scenario equipment-wise if they do not improve. 2311 at the moment with Bubba Wallace has been mediocre at best and with Kurt Busch has had glimpses of greatness but again has really gone to the mean of mediocrity. They're going to need to improve their equipment, performance, crews, everything before Reddit gets there if they're going to give him the proper backing that he deserves. And make no mistake about it, while Bubba Wallace might be the headliner because of popularity, Reddick is 
far and away the better driver and should be the one getting the primary focus of this team. And speaking of primary focus, I don't think Reddick is getting that anymore, which leads to the second bad thing is that Tyler Reddick is going to be a lame duck for the next year and a half. Now, Reddick has done this before, where he has run with JRM as a lame duck in the Xfinity series and went on to win the Xfinity championship. But there's one big, big glaring difference here. This is not the Xfinity series. This is a NASCAR Cup series. He does not have the best equipment with RCR the way he did with JRM. So being a lame duck for this long, one is going to probably be difficult and awkward at the shop for the driver, but two is definitely could very well bring down his performance as what's the point of Richard Childress giving Reddick possibly the best stuff because he has stated before that they wanted to build around Tyler Reddick. Why would he give him the best stuff anymore when his grandson, Austin Dillon, is right there? And now for the ugly. The first one is, this is yet again another ugly breakup for RCR. See, here's the response. We're proud of the success Tyler Reddick has found at Richard Childress Racing. We're focused on winning a championship in 2022 and 2023, although timing of this announcement could not be any worse. Richard Childress Racing has definitely expressed that they are not pleased whatsoever when it comes to the way that Tyler Reddick and Denny Hamlin went about this. Remember that RCR picked up Reddick's 2023 option, so they really probably should have known this going into it so that they could have prepared for a future after Reddick and also prepared for selling sponsorship. It probably doesn't look good to sell to sponsors. Hey, you should really sponsor this guy. He's going to leave us at the end of next year. Yeah, that probably doesn't look good on their account. And I can understand RCR and especially Richard Childress feeling hurt. I mean, they did want to build this team back up to a juggernaut with Reddick as the cornerstone. And now their future has been taken out. I mean, no disrespect to Austin Dillon, but he is no Tyler Reddick. And this isn't the first time they've had an ugly breakup. Just look at the way that Kevin Harvick ended up leaving the team and had a lame duck season himself in 2013. So... You got to think of your RCR, what is the main problem that we need to fix? Because two possibly generational talents leaving your team in the span of 10 years probably isn't going to be the best look and you need to be introspective for sure. Now with that, I want to pass this on to you. What do you think about Tyler Reddick's move to 2311? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Do you think Richard Childress Racing was right for the response or Maybe not. Let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. Thank you to all my channel members for your continued support. And remember, tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Eric Eastep's channel is the NASCAR Weekly Podcast, where myself, Danny B. Talks, Black Flags Matter, and Eric will all be talking about this, the Atlanta weekend, and so, so, so much more. So until next time, have a good one.